All right, we'll get started. Welcome to Magic Tricks and Secrets. My name is Abby and I work for NCW Libraries as our Children's Services Manager. Are you guys ready to be amazed by some magic and maybe learn a few new tricks? I see some of you saying yes. Um, if you want to participate, again, like I mentioned, you might want to grab some of these materials at home. I'll pop them into the chat. Um, a deck of cards, some scotch tape and a glue stick, a paper and a pen or a marker. So go ahead and find these items now if you have them. And if you don't, that's okay. If you don't need them. You'll still have a lot of fun today, witness some great magic and probably learn some awesome tricks too. Just as a reminder, all NCW library programs are free and open to the public and all participants must abide by the library's code of conduct, even in this Zoom setting. So I'll put our code of conduct there in the chat as well. Our guest today is magician Jeff Evans. Jeff loves reading. In fact, his career began from a book on magic about 30 years ago. His latest routine is sawing a person in half, a trick that he's been practicing with his brother. We're sorry to say that Jeff no longer has a brother. He does, however, have two new half brothers. Please welcome Jeff Evans and his amazing magic show with a big round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the amazing magic of Jeff Evans. Here we go. Welcome, everyone. Thanks, Abby. Hey, please give the North Central Washington Library a huge round of applause for inviting me back for the maybe the third summer of virtual shows. It's getting hard to keep track now. This is going to be interactive. So if your camera is on, that's awesome. And that way I will be able to see you guys. In fact, let me switch over to this view so I can see everyone. Cool. I've been working on a new skill. You know that I learned magic from a book, but my latest hobby is tying trick knots and ropes. And there's a lot of ways to tie knots. This is the one handed fastest knot in the world. So do not blink. Check it out. One hand. Whoa. And that is a one-handed overhand knot. As a bonus, it's also a slip knot, which means if I want to slide it on the rope, I can slide it along the rope. The only thing you can't do, you can't take it off the end of the rope because that would be against the rules of physics. So it always has to stay on the rope. Now, maybe you've seen other types of knots, like when you're tying your shoelaces, that's a bow knot. And if you pull on the ends, it seems to disappear. But what happens if you tie a bow knot and the ends get tangled inside the loops? This is what I call a nasty knot, because if you tie it really tight, it will never come undone. Then there's also single knots, double knots, sometimes called a square knot. If these ends get tangled inside, you get what technically is called a mess. That would be a knot on top of a knot on top of another knot. And my favorite type of knot is a knot that is not. And the applause is deafening. <laughs> I brought along another rope and I use different colored ropes for those of you who are hard of hearing. Here's your job. I want you to keep one eye on the red rope, keep one eye on the white rope, and keep one eye on me. Okay. Or don't watch me and just watch the knot. Now this happens super fast, so try not to blink. Do not blink, do not get dizzy, because it already happened. And that's the reason I use different colored ropes because for a long time I used the same color ropes and people never really appreciated the trick, but now they like it. But let's go back in time. Let's go back in time like 10 seconds when the knot was on the white rope. Then while you weren't blinking, so do not blink, the knot jumped onto the red rope and everyone went crazy. Now, I really wish that we were all together in the library because if we were, I would actually let you examine this, which surprises some people because some people think it's a trick knot. They think it's magnetic and it slides along the rope, 
which would explain how it slides on the rope. And they say that it can jump across between the, the ropes because it maybe it's Velcro and I can stick it to different parts of the rope. But that would not explain how this knot has actually become part of the red rope. And the applause is deafening. Oh, thanks, you guys. Thanks, you guys. So, you know, I've been trying to make it look like I'm in the library. I'm actually in my home studio. But I should mention that the next time you go into the actual library, if you would like to learn the secrets of magic in any library, the magic books are always in the 793.8 section. So whether you go to a school library, your public library, a library in a different city, if you go to the 793.8 section, that's where the magic books are. Now, this is also going to be kind of a workshop. I'm going to be teaching you a couple of very basic magic tricks. In fact, the first one uses numbers. It's kind of a math and magic trick. So I have a board. I'm going to write down some numbers. So I'm going to perform it for you, and then I'll show you how it's done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, the number is one through nine, and I'm going to need a volunteer. So if you'd like to help, kind of wave your hand in front of your monitor. Okay, and what's your name? Hudson. Okay, Hudson. So I've got the numbers one through nine. What I want you to do is name any number, whatever number you name, I'm going to, like if you said the number three, I would circle the number three, and then I'm going to cross out all the other numbers in the same row and the same column. But you name any number between one and nine. Six. Six. So I'm going to circle it. And then I'm going to cross out everything in the same column, everything in the same row. Okay, let's do it again. Uh, one, two, seven, or eight. Which of those numbers do you want? Um, seven. Ooh, seven. Same thing, I'm going to cross out everything in that row, everything in that column. Oh, it does leave one more number, the number two. Now, we're going to add up these three numbers. So everyone at your home, you can help us add. Two plus six is? Eight. Eight. Thirteen. And then eight plus seven is? Thirteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. Hudson. You're not going to believe this. On the back of this board, I actually wrote that your magic number is 15. Wow! <laughs> Everyone, get a piece of paper and a pen, and we are going to do this same math and magic trick, and you're going to be amazed. No matter what numbers you choose, it always ends up being 15. So get a piece of paper and a pen. And you're going to put the, the numbers three in a row. You're going to put one, two, three. Then go to the next row. Now, Hudson, let's do it again, but this time I want you to pick different numbers. So, which number do you want to pick for your first number? Um, four. Okay, so everyone, actually, if you're doing this at your house, you don't have to copy us. You can choose your own numbers, but since, Hudson, since you chose four, I'm going to cross out the ones in the same column, the ones in the same row. Now we have two, three, eight, nine. Um, nine. Okay, I'm gonna circle the nine. I'm gonna cross out everything in the column and in the row. And the last number is the number two. It's the only one left. Okay, let's add this up. Four plus two is? Six. Six. Six, Six plus nine? Fifteen. 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 It works every single time. All you have to do is put the numbers one through nine like this. You can do it for your friends and it works every single time. Hey, Hudson, what city are you in? Um, Bellevue. Oh, you're in Bellevue. Way cool. Okay. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Wave goodbye to everyone. Bye.
Bye. See ya. You know, I've been acting like I'm at the library and this is just, you probably guess, this is just my backdrop. So I'm gonna take this down because I have some other things here in my studio to show you. Hey, let's do something that you can participate in at your own house. But for this, you're just gonna hold up fingers for the number of spots that you see. So right now, how many spots do you see on this card? Just hold up fingers. Okay, good. How many spots on this side? How many spots on this side? And how many are on this side? Okay, now I'm gonna change the question a little bit. How many spots are on the side of the card that I'm looking at right now? Oh, not one, actually three. And there's six on that side. But there's no way that you could have known that because I only showed you the side with one spot and four spots. I didn't even show you the sides with three spots and six spots. So you couldn't have known about that. Hold on, something weird is happening. Okay, here's the secret. There's actually five spots. One, two, three, four, five. When I put my hand here, you see four. But when I put my hand here, your mind fills in the pattern. So you assume there should be six spots, like on dominoes or dice. So knowing that, how many do you think are actually on this side? Right? Yep, just two. But when I put my hand here, your mind fills in the pattern that you expect to see. So if you actually take a piece of cardboard and you put spots just like this, you can do this trick. So here's three, here's one. But here's the important thing. Remember not to move that hand because if you move the hand like to wave to your friend, they're gonna see there really are six spots. There really are three and then they're gonna see spots before their eyes. I brought my super miracle bubbles. I don't know if you've seen the no pop bubbles. The main reason I love the no pop bubbles, you can collect them. There's like eight sizes to collect. I'm gonna put that in my pocket. Oh wait, I've got something else in my pocket that some of you are going to recognize. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. If you know what this contraption is, Actually, how about this? If you know what this is, put it in the chat box because I'm able to see the chat box on my computer. So if you think you know what this is, I will give you a little hint. It usually has a bag on the bottom. Let's see. Okay, now you guys can see what I'm seeing on my computer. Is these, um, it's the clamp on a purse. You are correct. This is part of a, okay, Sawyer says, I don't know. Sarah and Emily say, we have a magic trick, but a coin purse clamp. Okay, you guys are correct. This is where magicians carry their money. This is where I carry, um, that's 50 cents. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, it's a giant coin. Before I do any trick with this, I have to do a quick gravity check, basically. If I drop it and it falls down, good. That is good gravity. On the other hand, if it falls up, that would be bad gravity. Kids, kids, gravity should go down. Gravity does not go towards the ceiling. That is very bad. <laughs> Either that or it's a really good magic trick. Here's another good magic trick. This is a little karate. Hiya! Cause I'm a ninja. Okay, not actually a ninja, but I am wearing my black belt today. Black belt. So I've got the 50 cent piece. I also have, I'm gonna show you what I have on my desk. I have a, a little container with a bunch of coins. I've got some pennies. That's a dime. That's a quarter. And oh, I need someone who would like to help out. I'm gonna find someone. Let's go. Let's go Sarah and Emily. There we are. Also, you've, hey, hold up your magic trick book so that everyone can see it. Yeah, my mom gave, well, our mom. Cool. Technically, whatever. So, <laughs> are you, oh, okay. What's, what's one trick that you've learned from that book? Well, there's lots of tricks, but I'll, I'll find uh, my favorite one. Uh, 
while you're doing that, I'm just going to put some hair gel in my hair. And I didn't put some hair gel in my hair. The, the disappearing penny. It's where you put a penny inside the rim of a handkerchief. And, and so you hide a penny underneath it. And while you're holding the handkerchief, you slowly slip the penny in, in it. And then you shake it and the penny's not there. That sounds but awesome. Okay, well, you remember what I have on my table. I've got a bunch of coins inside of a container. And now, which of you is Sarah and which of you is Emily? I'm Emily, she's Sarah. Okay, which of you wants to give this a shot? Sarah, do you? Nope, she's pointing to me at my leg. Okay, so it's Emily, right? Yep. Okay, Emily, I want you to take a wild guess how much all these coins are worth. But now, before you answer, I don't want you trying to zoom in and count the money. I just want you to use your intuition, take your best educated guess. If we added up all these coins, how much do you think it would be worth? I'll give you a hint, it's more than $2. Yeah, that's obvious. It's less than $12. 10? But be really specific, like $10 and how many cents? $10.15. Oh my gosh, how did you know that? $10. I don't get it. No, that's exactly what it is. It, well, except for one thing. I've been calling these money and coins, but they're actually not coins. They're just pictures of coins. How? <laughs> they look so real, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's the weird thing. After I took the picture of the coins, I added up all the money and I wrote the amount that the actual coins were worth on the back of the picture. They were worth $10.15. I, I don't know how I guessed. I couldn't even zoom in because this isn't my computer. This is my sister Kate's computer. And I don't know how to zoom in because this is like well, my second time using Zoom. Well, I think that maybe you read my mind. And I think that everyone should give you a huge round of applause. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of people watching today. You have no idea how many people are watching today. Thanks a lot to both of you. Wave goodbye to everyone. That was awesome. I love it when kids have magic books and they're learning magic. And how did she read my mind? How did she know it was $10.15? Crazy. Hey, let's learn another magic trick. And this is a, I'm going to teach you two ways of balancing a small object like a pack of cards on top of another card. So here's the, here's the impromptu way that you can do with any regular deck of cards with no preparation at all. I simply take a deck of cards, wiggle my fingers, and I place it in a deep hypnotic trance. And once it is hypnotized, I can balance the card box on top of a card. Okay, here's the secret. The secret is <laughs> from the front, it looks like it's precariously balanced on the card, but from the back view, you see that it's actually my finger is a little tripod and it is supporting the card box. Now, some of your friends are gonna guess, oh, well, maybe you're just using your finger to hold it up. So then you go to plan B, which is the more advanced version. And this requires a little bit of preparation. I'm gonna to attempt to balance it on my open palm so you know, oh, that I'm not using any fingers and check it out. The, oh, the deck of cards is balancing on a card. So here's where we're gonna to have to do a little bit of damage to a card because this card is actually a secret tripod card. So it's two cards glued together and to make it, if you have two cards that you can permanently damage, go ahead and get those out. And I'm gonna make my own spare copy of this gimmick with these regular cards. So if you've got a couple of cards that you can, you can donate to the Art of Magic, get them out, take one of the cards and you're gonna fold it lengthwise, which is like this. And then fold it back and forth a couple of times to kind of 
get the crease really worked into the card so it will easily open and fold. I don't know if I mentioned this, but the magic section is 793.8. And when I was a kid, one of the basic magic books that I checked out taught this. It's a super easy, obviously, and all you need are two playing cards. So once you have this, you're gonna glue your flap card onto the other card like this. So I've got a glue stick, but you can use whatever you have. You can also use a couple pieces of tape to do this. And don't worry if you don't actually have these items on hand right now, you can always do this at home later. So you only put the glue on half of the flap card. So I put it on this side and then you stick it onto the other card, press it down. Oh, I see people are feverishly working at their desks and the kitchen table. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you've got if you've got yours ready, just hold it up so that we can see it and I will kind of find a couple people to spotlight. Perfect. And once you have your flap card, whatever you want to balance on top so you could use in this case I use the the card box, but you can use anything else too. And you don't have to bounce it on your hand. Actually, it's kind of hard bouncing on your hand. It's better if you can just put it on your table and then set it on top. But again, all that's happening is that little flap acts like a tripod, a little kick kickstand to support the card box or whatever you, oh, nice job. Allie, that looks perfect. That looks very magical how it's just kind of floating on top. Oh, nice. Sarah Johnson family, you guys are looking good. Jonathan, good job. Yeah. And the neat thing about the flap card is that when you're done using it, all you have to do is fold it flat and you can even show the back of it and it looks just like a regular card as long as you're holding the flap closed. So now you too can make things seemingly float on top of a playing card. Nice job you got. Oh, Allie, you're getting quite a... Ooh, oh, it's looking tippy. It could fall at any moment. All right, let's do... Let's do magic with food. If you, if you like fruits and vegetables, here's what I want you to do. Everyone, think of a number between three and 12. Think of a number between three and 12. Lock that number into your mind. And now I'm gonna show you a picture of a bunch of fruits arranged in a circle. I don't want you to look for your favorite. In a moment, you're going to randomly select a fruit and here's how you're gonna do it. Whatever your magic number is, you're gonna start where it says start here and then you're gonna move in a clockwise direction following the red arrow, your magic number. So if your magic number was four, you would count one, two, three, you would be on the watermelon, four, you would be on the pear. But I want you to do it for whatever your magic number is between three and 12, so do that now. I think we can all agree that there's no way that I or anyone else could know what fruit you landed on because you all thought of your own magic number. But now we're gonna make it even more random. Remember where you stopped, but now I want you to move counterclockwise the same number. So if your magic number was four the first time, now you're gonna move four going following the blue arrow. So do that now. At this point, you should be pointing to or thinking about one of the fruits. One of the fruits that I have pictures of inside of this sketch pad. And now when I snap my fingers, as though you're in a deep hypnotic trance, I believe that you are thinking of an orange. Yes, 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 if an orange go crazy. 
Look at that, they were all different, and then I snapped my fingers and they all became oranges. And in fact, this is a 3D sketch pad, which means that if I want to pull one of these fruits or vegetables off of the page, I simply roll it into a tube, and voila. Isn't that crazy? I mean, the chances that you all end up thinking of an orange, what are the chances? It's like, maybe it was some subliminal message about the piece of paper, or maybe we're all thinking of oranges. I don't know, but that's what happened. Let's do some more magic with numbers. I'm going to find, oh, how about this? We'll use the chat box and I'm going to do this. You can see what's on the, ch on the chat box. I'm looking for a lucky two or three digit number. Okay, let's go. I see Marlena and Roman put 156. So I'm going to put one, 156 times and Chris Miller put 50. It's 50 times, um, Natalie put 54 times, let's see, one more. Oh, actually, you know what? Times put 25. Okay, so here's the answer. This is a pretty random number, 264010. How interesting is that, that of all the numbers that we could have multiplied, happens to match the same digits that I've had sitting on my table the entire time, 264010. Hmm, wait a minute. A moment ago, you all thought of an orange. And now by multiplying numbers, we get this random number that seems to be 264010, but in actuality, it also predicted the very fruit that you selected a moment ago. Oh, sit down, please sit down. You guys are so generous. I know that Emily and Sarah had a book at their house, but I wanna borrow someone's book that's not a magic book. So if someone has a book sitting nearby within reach that you can easily grab, Okay, let's go Mason and Julia. You guys are our next participants. Can you unmute yourself? Hey, let's use the book. How many pages are in your book? While Mason's looking for that, I wanna call your attention to this envelope. 96. 96. Okay. I want you to think of a page number between 1 and 96. Think of it in your brain. And I am going to, I'm going to attempt to use my mind reading hat to guess what page number you're thinking of. Gaze into my eyes. Okay. I think I got it. Is your name Mason? Yeah. I knew that. Mason, <laughs> I am committed. I wrote down a page number for the first time. What page number are you thinking of? 52. 52, no way. I actually wrote page number 52. Hey, thank you so much for helping. Uh, let's do one more thing. Actually, not with your book. I have a pack of cards. Do you know the names of cards in a deck? Mm, there's the king, there's the queen, there's yeah. the jester, and then there's the... Mason, say no more. I made a prediction of one card in this pack of cards. I want you to name any card in the deck. The king. The king of clubs, hearts, spades, or diamonds? Spades. King of spades. You're not going to believe this. I flipped one card face down before the show. 
I'm gonna fan the cards out right in the center. There's one card face down, even though we've never met. What city are you in? Uh, Wenatchee. Wenatchee? You're in Wenatchee, I'm in Olympia. I flip one card face down as a prediction. I happen to flip the King of Spades face down. You guys, thank you so much for being part of the show. Wave goodbye to everyone. King of Spades. Hey, I just realized I was glancing in my monitor and some of the colors on my monitor look a little bit weird. Hey kids, if you can see the red and the blue handkerchief okay, just nod your head. If you can see the red and the blue handkerchief. I'm seeing like, no, I mean, it is, it is red and blue though, right? Okay, just, just making sure, just making sure. Let's learn. Uh, hey, let's let's do a card trick that all of you can perform. If you have a pack of cards, get your cards out. And you're also going to need a piece of paper and a pen just to make a prediction. I'm going to make a I'm going to I'm going to make a couple piles of cards here on the table and I'm going to get a prediction which I've written on, put on a bright orange piece of paper. Oh, I am going to need to have another volunteer. Hey, if you want to help with this, just kind of raise your hand. Let's go with. Yes. Sawyer, Sawyer, you're the next participant. Are you outside or is it just really bright where you are? Um, I'm outside. Cool, cool. Well, what city are you in? Uh, East Wenatchee. Cool, East Wenatchee. Okay, so I've got two piles of cards. Now, I'm not sure, you know, sometimes the, the camera switches the left and the right. So I'm going to say this is pile A and this is pile B. Which do you want pile A or do you want pile B? Pile A. Okay, so you want this pile, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, I'm going to flip these over and you'll notice that I've got, this is the six pile because these are sixes and these cards are just different cards. So you pick the six pile and my prediction is that you will choose the six pile. Uh, wait. Yeah. What? Yeah. And the weird thing is this works 100% of the time and I'm going to teach you guys how you can do it. Now, there is one little secret thing, and in fact, this is true of a lot of magic tricks. You can only do this trick one time for the same audience. Like, I wouldn't do the, I would not do the money trick for you guys a second time because you already know that it's worth $10.15, so I couldn't do it again. And I, I wouldn't do this trick again because, well, in fact, how about this? We're going to go back in time and Sawyer, I'm going to put these piles in the same spots and I'm going to show you why I can't do this trick for the same people a second time. So I'm going to use same prediction, I'm going to leave it right here. Okay, Sawyer, do you want pile A or pile B? Pile B. Right, you're going to pick pile B. Here's what I would do. I would say, okay, so uh, you want pile B, let's count these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's the six pile. And what's this? One, two, three, four. Okay, so you picked you picked the six pile, and I predicted that you will choose the six pile. So uh, you see what it is, is that no matter which pile they choose, you're always correct because in one of the piles, you put all of four sixes, and in the other pile, you put six cards. So, yeah, so if you have a piece of paper, I want you to write down this prediction. You will choose the six pile. And the neat thing about this is, again, you can do this with any regular deck of cards. You can borrow cards from your friend and you just take a piece of paper and write this down. Perfect. And if you have a deck of cards and don't worry if you don't, Sawyer, but if you do and you're just on the Zoom call, go through the deck and find the four sixes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and I will tell you, oh, oh, did you use the six for the, oh, that's yeah. fine. Okay. You will not be able to do this, but that's fine. But since you wrote the prediction down, then you'll remember it. And the next time you have a pack I, of cards. 
I have another deck of cards at home. I think. Okay. Cool. Cool. That's totally I, fine. I live in Quincy. Okay. Nice. So for everyone watching, you already know the secret. Now one pile has the four sixes. One pile has exactly six cards. You put the piles down, put your prediction down. Don't let your friends see your prediction before the trick starts, have them pick a pile. And if they pick the pile that has the sixes, you turn the cards face over and you show you, you know, show them that you have four sixes mm -hmm. and then you turn the other cards over and sh oh, wait, I had a six in there. Whoops. <laughs> that shouldn't have happened. Okay. Turn the other pile over, but you don't call attention to the number of cards unless they pick the cards that is the actual has six cards then you count you don't turn the show the faces you just count them face down one two three four five six one two three four and magic so that is how you can perform the six pile card trick cool thanks sawyer bye see ya whoa what should we do next oh you know what it's time to play a game and i love puzzles and this is a puzzle that many of you have played it's the tic-tac-toe game so i brought i kind of made up a tic-tac-toe board and i need to find someone who is good at tic-tac-toe that would like to challenge me to a little friendly game of tic-tac-toe um, I see a lot of, let's go. Hey, thanks for helping. Is it, is it pronounced Gen? Hi. Hi. How do you, how do you say your name? Um, well, that isn't really my, my real, it's, it's my mom's name. My real name is Leo. Okay, Leo. Okay, cool. Leo. Oh, you know I, and, and, uh. And remember at the fair last year, I was your assistant there. Wait a minute, uh, the one in Adams County? No, in Linden. In Linden. Oh, up in, wait, well, what city are you in? I'm in, I'm in we East, moved. we moved. I'm in oh. Eastern Washington. Oh, that's cool, nice. Yeah, I had a great time. That's a the Northwest Washington Fair. I love that fair. Okay, so you know how to play tic-tac-toe. You know that you've got to get three in a row. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So you can get three in a row horizontally or three in a row vertically. Gotta put, gotta put this so you can see this. Oh, and I also made, I, I love making predictions. So I've got a prediction on the back of this piece of paper. I'm just gonna attach it there to my backdrop. So it's like kind of in the back background. So Leo, do you, let's see, I like to go, I like to go in the middle. You can be the O's. Do you wanna go at A? B, C, D, E, F, G, or H? Um, B. B, do you want to go right here? Uh, actually, C, C. C, you, you want to go here in the corner? Yeah. Okay, that's actually smarter. That is tactically a better decision because then you can go that way or that way. Okay, so I have to go... Okay, I'm gonna go right there. So already, if you aren't paying attention, there is a little, there's a chance that I could win on my next move. So Leo, do you wanna go at A, which is good, B, which is good, C, which is good, D, not good. I do not recommend D or E or F. Where do you wanna go? D. Uh, D, D as in cat? No, D, <laughs> oh, D. As in, oh, like dog? Yeah. Oh, well, sorry, I wanted to go there. I didn't want you to go there. Man, come on, Leo, let, let me win once in a while. Okay, so now now I've got to change my plan because you caught me on that. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right there. <gasps> oh, this is, this is super sneaky. I don't think you're gonna catch this one. So you could go at A, but I, I don't recommend that, but you could go at B or C or D. A. A like baby? No. <laughs> okay, uh, but that's where I, oh man, I, was, I didn't know you'd see the diagonal. That blocks me again. Um, I'm gonna go, oh man, this is getting tricky. I'm gonna go right there. <gasps> oh, there's one more chance for me to win. Okay, Leo, do you wanna go 
At A or at B? A. Uh, what's what's it gonna be? A. Oh man! Oh, well then I have to go there, and I didn't want to go there, and that um, it was a tie game. Neither of us won. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! I did make a prediction. This this prediction I predicted a game. I've got to put these like side by side because the game we just played we just played X O O but I predicted X O O, and then we played O X X O X X X X O X X O. Wow. Yeah, in the. If you're a professional tic-tac-toe player, you call this a cat's game because it's a tie. But we haven't just been playing tic-tac-toe. We've also been completing a puzzle because in the back of every one of these game tokens, there's part of a picture. Like that's part of a picture. That's part of a picture. That's I know who it is. And this puzzle only makes sense if you and I played the exact game in the exact order that we did to make the cat in the hat. <laughs> Funny. Leo, thank you so much. It's good seeing you again, man. Have a great summer. Wow. You guys, what are the chances of that? This is this is so crazy. Now you guys know that I like magic. I also like puzzles and it turns out that the puzzle section is right next to the magic section in the library. So I brought one of my favorite puzzles of all time, but I'm not gonna lie, this is also one of the world's most frustrating puzzles because you've probably tried to solve it and you probably could not solve it. I've got it in this bag. If you think you know what this puzzle is, put it in the chat box. Put it in the chat box. I know that someone's going to guess it. Right. Let's see as, as it comes in. <laughs> Emily is confused. Emily says, be right back. <gasps> Chris Miller, you're correct. Rubik's Cube, Jonathan Goldberg, the Quincy Library, Ruby. You guys are all correct. It is the Rubik's Cube. Very frustrating. This was created, I think, in the late 70s, maybe the early 80s by a Polish inventor. And there's some math built into it. There's a lot of memorizing algorithms if you want to get into that. This is the way I originally learned how to solve the cube. Since then, a lot of times I go onto YouTube and I, and I look up the new techniques, but this shows you step by step how to twist the cube and get all the colors to line up. The reason that the Rubik's Cube is so frustrating is that even after you solve one side, when you try to solve the second side, you always mix up the first side, unless you know the algorithms to use, or unless you are really, really, really persistent and you don't give up and you're just able to brute force solve it. But it takes hours and hours. It's, it's very difficult. But I'm going to shuffle the cube and then I'm going to solve it. I'm going to need to find someone Mariana and Roman. Hey, oh my gosh, you guys, you're you're part of the magic show. I, I know it's you got yeah, unmute your microphone. Hi. Say hi. hi. What city are you guys in? Um Washington. Cashmere. 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 Love Cashmere. All the orchards and yeah, nice. I'm gonna start shuffling this. I'm gonna mix it up behind my head. I'm just gonna start doing this. And you think that it's totally mixed up, just say stop mixing. Stop. Okay, right there. Okay, so I think we can all agree this is pretty random. Now, since I have photographic memory, and since I know the algorithm, I'm going to take a couple seconds just to look. Oh, you guys, see that pattern? Yeah. I recognize it. Oh, I'm recognizing these patterns because I have photographic <laughs> memory. Okay, Roman, you are my official timer. I want you to say, ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. You guys oh, think it's a new Guinness World Record. 
I know. I just snap. Ah! Oh no! Oh, oh. oh no. Wait, that's not my. Oh, that was an accident. That was an accident. Calm down. No. Calm down, you guys. You oh, no. it. <laughs> uh oh, I am so. Okay, we're going to have to edit this part out of the video. Don't worry. I'm editing this out of the video. But I'm going to make it up to you guys. I'm going to solve the cube while blindfolded. I think I've got. Yes. Okay, I'm going to use. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it while blindfolded. Okay, Roman. You can see your eyes. No, I can't. I can't. I'm totally blindfolded. Roman, stay ready, set, go. Go, go. Okay. Now, since I have photographic memory, since I know exactly how it's sitting on the table, <laughs> how close is it getting? Not even close. Oh come on! It's got to be getting close. No, it should it's be. Not. It should be done. Oh, oh no! I I grabbed the wrong one. You you guys, I grabbed the wrong one. You should have said something. Oh, Roman, you should have. Sorry. Oh, wait wait a minute. It's the same. What? It's matching. Is that the same? Yes. yes. Hold on. Is that the same? Yes. And that side? Yes. And that side? Yes. And the top? Yes. Yeah. And the bottom! Yes? You must have grabbed the wrong one! I, what, I, did it, I did it while blindfolded. And if you think about it, doing that is even more impressive than solving the Rubik's Cube behind <laughs> my back. How do you always do that? <laughs> and if you guys want to find the puzzle section in the library, it's right next to the magic section. So magic sec section 793.8 puzzle section right next to it. Hey, they, oh, 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 and one more other thing. You know, I was telling you that I was going to put on a blindfold. It's not even a blindfold. I don't even know what it is. It was just sitting in the corner of my room and I grabbed it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Oh, that was on my face. That's disgusting. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're going to have to erase that. Oh, my gosh. That's so weird. <laughs> All right, see you guys. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Oh, boy. Hey, do you guys like cartoons? Cartoons are kind of magical. In fact, if you think about what a cartoon is, a cartoon is a bunch of still photos played one after the other, and your mind puts all these pictures together into one moving image. But I made it my own cartoon and I put it in a pack of cards and I'm using big cards just so it's easier for you to see. So I've got an entire pack of cards, but the weird thing is, is that on the back of every card, there's a picture of a magician. I drew a little magician and he is going to come to life. But first, I do need one final participant. So if you would like to be part of the show, raise your hand. Oh, I see people going crazy. They, uh, let's go. Okay, man, I wish I could pick all of you, but I'm going to pick, is it Calvin? Hey, yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's Caleb. Okay, Caleb, do you know the names of cards in a deck? Like, do you know the name of that card? Diamonds. Yeah, nine of diamonds. Do you have a favorite card in a pack of cards? No. I want you to make up a favorite card. So, like, these are diamonds. These are clubs. These are hearts. What? These are spades. Ace. Ace. Okay. Now, do you like the ace of um, spades? Or do you like... Heart. Ace, ace of hearts. Ace of hearts. Heart. Okay, you guys, everyone, remember this card. That's called the ace of hearts. Oh, and did I tell you that I made, I drew a cartoon for you. Caleb, I drew this cartoon for you. Check this out. On the back of every card, there's a little cartoon magician. And when I flip through the edges, he's going to come to life. Taking his hat off, reaching into his hat. And you know what? What do, what do magicians keep in their hat? Bunny rabbit. They bunny rabbits. That's a bunny. But as you watch the bunny, he's going to morph. He's going to change into... Ooh, he's changing into a card, a giant card. And as he flips the card over, the card in his hat happens to be the Ace of Hearts. What? 
Ghost? Yeah. Because he knew what you were going to choose. Wow. No, that's just a Thanks for helping. You guys were awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. This fun show would not have been possible without your NCW libraries. Please give your libraries a huge round of applause. And I have some great news for you. If you have a library card, the next time that you go into the library, go up to the checkout counter and get all the materials you want to check out. Remember, you can check out books, you can check out magazines, you can check out DVDs, you can check out books on CD or the Playaway books on MP3. Get everything you want to check out, go to the checkout counter with your library card, and all of your checkouts are going to be free. Free checkouts at the library with your library card. And before I leave, I have to show you my favorite card trick, and I use giant cards. <laughs> my favorite, I will tell you that my favorite card is in the middle. So if you know the name of my favorite card, put it in the chat box. Again, my favorite card is, is in the middle. See the first person to get it. Oh, Natalie says Ace of Clubs, and you are correct. My favorite card is the Ace of Clubs. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. My favorite card is actually my library card. Please give the NCW libraries a huge round of applause. Everyone, you can unmute your microphones and go crazy. Okay. Oh!